Since the foundation of the Russian fascist party in Harbin, there have been two people fighting for control. The aggressive Konstantin Rodazevsky, who refused to denounce National Socialism despite its genocide of the Russian people, and Mikhail Matovsky, our leader. We took control over the port of Magadan and declared Rodazevsky a traitor. Only we will reunite Russia under true fascism, not National Socialism. But our resources are paper thin. Despite this, our leader has a few plans to strengthen our position. And one is located on the other side of the Atlantic. But first we have to turn to ourselves. We will begin to build infrastructure like roads and even small workshops. All throughout eastern Siberia there is no great industrial hub. However, we will try our best to create our own industry to arm our soldiers for the day we will begin our reconquest. But an army cannot march on an empty stomach. Despite the not-so-fertile lands of Siberia, we will with enough work manage to improve our agriculture. For now we can only wait and see if our factories and farms are successful. In the meantime we will train our soldiers to the harsh weather of Siberia. We will acquire new advisors and try out radical techniques. Our factories have started to bear fruits. We will equip our military with new adequate equipment and special winterized gear to withstand the cold. But still winter is coming, we must sit it out. We are in desperate times, our food supply is running out and our new winter equipment barely works. We will need outside help, our party will not survive alone. Luckily we have three groups that could help us. The Tsar in Cheetah, the Americans and the Russian fascists who have migrated to America. The easiest will be the Russian migrants. And our call was answered. We gladly welcomed the wizard of whispering death and his crew, mercenaries who have fought all around the world. We will integrate them into our military. We also received funds from the Russian fascist organization. Meanwhile we have started to receive investments and weapons from the CIA. But if we want further support we have to show Nixon that we are different from the fascist he hates. To do this we will sign the Siberian Bill of Rights and promise to reform even more. But that is not all they want. We will give them the ability to spy on the Japanese through the port of Magadan. Now we can begin to cooperate with the Tsar in Chita. We will put aside our differences and open smuggling routes between our nations. All to strike against our common enemy, the Nazis in Amur. With our new friendship, we will raid Amur from the east while Chita does the same from the west. Finally our position is secured. But before we proceed to our holy task we will wait and let the treaty simmer for a while. We will use all the resources we gain from them to reform our military again. We can choose to turn it into a mercenary force or a foreign one. But we must not turn into them, we must stay Russian. Learning from the White Army will keep our soldiers motivated and fighting till the bitter end. And our officers will learn from the Red Army who despite their failure against the Germans still held them at bay. But we are still a Siberian army. The cold and harsh weather won't bother us. Our reforms are done. We are ready to unite the Russian fascist party. The second time of troubles are here. War is back in eastern Siberia. Time to crush the Nazis. We will break through their walls. Amur has a bigger army than ours but they haven't mobilized all of it. So we could advance two tiles and capture one of their forts. But supply is low so we assaulted the port city of Shumikan. Now we can ship resources from Magadan much closer to the front. We tried to continue more south but got stopped by the mobilized Amur army. We will have to inscript more people into ours. Then we received worrying information. The strange Christian socialist cult in the north are preparing an invasion of us. So it's all or nothing. We have stationed two divisions in Magadan to protect the city. The rest will rush towards Zeya. 
The Amur army, who was unprepared for a concentrated attack, cracked and we could rush towards their population center. The first city we captured was Magadashi. They had a division in Zeya, so before we attacked the city, we captured Svobodi and then turned north again. The crack we had created in the front have been filled again. We are encircled, but the city of Zeya is so close. After a violent battle, we overwhelmed the defenders and could capture the city and Tynda. Amr surrendered and our party is whole again. We will as fast as possible try to integrate their states into our country. With the party united again, we can start to work towards a republic of labor and toil. No rigid racial hierarchy and the party will care for the needs of the individual. We can now turn our army north and destroy the mandate of Siberia. Their divisions were weak since there isn't much industry in northern Siberia. The cold didn't bother us, but it still took a long time to march to their capital. We arrived in Omolon, their holy city, then we planned to continue towards Vilyu and Zigansk, but they surrendered before we could. While we invaded them, we started two programs. The program of survival and the program of unity. The program of survival will start to turn us towards the autarky. We will confiscate and seize whatever is needed for the state and the country to succeed. And the program of unity will unite our people under our cause. With more aid from the Russian migrants in America, we will spread our powerful message. We will unite the Russian people after the USSR and the Germans shattered our unity. The mandate of Siberia is defeated, so we can now destroy the remnants of the Soviet Pacific Fleet. They only had one single division and we chased it down through Kamchatka. Soon we arrived to the bottom of the peninsula and defeated them. Irkutsk has expanded as fast as we have. They have invaded Yakutsk and are close to Chita. But we will save the Tsar and destroy Irkutsk together with them. We declared war and marched into Yakutsk. They had no division since most fought in Chita, so we easily captured the whole state. The Irkutsk Red Army tried to push us back but we encircled their division and crushed it. But if we continue any further our divisions would suffer from heavy attrition forcing us to retreat back again. We do not have time to establish a supply hub so we will have to attack Chita and march through their country instead. The Tsar wasn't ready for our backstab and most of his divisions are already fighting a losing battle against Irkutsk, so we advanced uncontested. The few garrison that defended our border got encircled and captured by our army. We continued all the way to Borzia but got encircled by the Tsarist army. Luckily we managed to break our units out at the cost of the city. The Tsar has reinforced our front with us, but we will break through the their walls, we have to. We concentrated our divisions and managed to advance in the mountains of Chita. From there we went along the Chita Irkutsk front and soon arrived to Chita. It's only we and Irkutsk left in eastern Siberia now and we have a bigger army. Both of us are tired so only a small offensive against the Irkutsk Red Army will completely shatter it. And it did, after we captured Taksimo and Bodeido, the whole Irkutsk government collapsed. Eastern Siberia is united and we can form the Siberian National Republic. We will immediately start to recover the weak economy of Siberia and deal with our overextended administration with the recent unification of our region. But we will also begin a repopulation program and strengthen remigration from America. To recover our industry, we will form the Recovery Commission who will oversee any project and coordinate our resources. And to decide the future of our party, we will call the Party Congress. This was when our party split into multiple wings. The laborists under Matkovsky and the reformists under our foreign minister. The reformers want closer relations with the Americans, while the laborists want to keep us at a distance and form a fascist half-autarchy. But both sides agree that the stability of our state is the most important and that reform is needed to stabilize it. We will side with Matkovsky, our leader, since he has turned us from a small state to the biggest Russian state. Thus, we will strengthen his power and use the state intelligence service to crack down on 
on any fanatics seeking to destroy our country. Meanwhile, our recovery has come a long way. We have started to copy Bukharin's Siberian plan, a last-ditch effort to industrialize Siberia. And despite the short time it had, it was largely successful. Our plan consists of maintaining the Trans-Siberian Railway, investing several millions of dollars into improving our old factories, and expanding mining operations all throughout our country. But that is not all the recovery commission did. Lifting farmers from poverty through new equipment and methods turned our agricultural method to mass mechanization. But we also had to improve our research and education capabilities. So we established a university which includes the school of mining, economy, industry and several more. Right now the balance of power is perfectly balanced. But we will let the reformers drive through one of the reforms to open immigration. This will help us large in our population and hopefully skilled workers will find their way to our country. To counteract the growing strength of the reformists we will create the manifesto of national labor, introducing a new ideology of national syndicalism. We will also introduce a reform to let our executive office veto any policy or proposal that would destabilize and erode our country. We have endured, the administrative strains are gone and peace and stability is all throughout our realm. We can now get rid of the reformists in the way of our further success. Our industry is still growing. We have imported important machinery to aid our factories and increase the minimum wage for our workers. And our efforts are paying off. More and more of our goods are being produced in Russia. We have risen from the ashes and created a nation of industry and development. We can now turn to the opportunities abroad. With the reformist minister of foreign affairs gone, we won't pursue an alliance with the Americans. Instead, we will try our best to get the Russian diaspora to return home. By providing them an easy way to return, we will grow our economy and strengthen our numbers. Despite us not wanting an American overlord, we will still try to negotiate a trade agreement with them. We flew all the way to Washington only to get rejected. But we can stand on our own feet, we don't need the Americans. Instead, we will try to negotiate with the Canadians, Mexicans, Australians and New Zealanders. Most of them accepted and our GDP has grown a lot because of this. Our adventures abroad are finished. Now we will start to look towards further unification of Russia. The government of the Central Siberian Federation is ideologically compatible with us, but if unification talks fail, war would break out. So we have to reform and strengthen our army. We did many things, but for the most part we refined our tactics and strengthened our military industry. The most important thing we did was to start to research several new weapons and vehicles. For example, our factories have already started to manufacture our own armored fighting vehicle that we will create special divisions with. Almost a year later, we are ready to start unification talks with the Central Siberian Federation. They have agreed to meet us and hold peaceful talks. Currently we have the diplomatic weight higher than theirs and we will keep it that way. We will immediately propose a trade deal because if we intertwine our economies it will be much easier to unite. Luckily for the Russian people they accepted. To ensure that we don't attack each other we will also propose a non-aggression agreement. At the same time they proposed a joint exercise that we gladly accepted. The non-aggression pact has been set in motion and our two states are friends. We can now hold a preliminary conference. But first we will offer them diplomatic concessions to show that this friendship is not one-sided. The preliminary conference has been held and everything has gone to plan. It is time for the final unification talks. Since we have the most diplomatic weight, we are the ones who annex them. Siberia is unified. Our corporations can start to expand westwards. But we can't expand more west to western Russia. We have to take a pause and solidify our control in central Siberia. 
It has been a mess for a while. Completely different ideologies have reigned the region. We must send in our state intelligence service to ensure that everyone is loyal. But people won't stay loyal only through oppression. We need to show them that national syndicalism is the way forward. So we will begin to implement the Manifesto of National Labour. We will create a new Siberian bill that we created for such a long time ago. In the manifesto we promise to implement universal suffrage. We will immediately do that. The elections will be completely fair, only that if a candidate is threatening national safety we can veto him out. To keep dangerous ideas away from our population we will begin to censor the press. Meanwhile, our economic integration of central Siberia has come a long way. We have continued to corporatize it and begun the Great Siberian Highway Project. Our efforts of democratization have paid off. People are turning up to cast their votes and we have won an overwhelming majority. There is no opposition causing any troubles and no partisan disrupting our peace. We really live in the perfect state. Our army has come a long way since our time as a warlord state in Magadan. Now it is almost as strong as western armies like the American. All that remains is to prepare ourselves for the final struggle against Boris Yeltsin. And what better way than to turn to the power of the atom? Around six months later, the theoretical development is done and we have started searching for uranium. More importantly, the Russian reunification war is closer than ever. The West has already started to prepare, we have no time to lose. We will prepare for war production, turning our corporate empire into an economic war machine. To supply the front, we will develop railways and new supply hubs. We have already mobilized and trained our new infantry fighting vehicle, but we will do the same with our new air force. We have also started to raise emergency reserves in the form of 24 divisions. Our preparedness is over 75%, we are ready to strike the Russian Federative Republic. They have fortified our whole border, but mostly in Omsk. Any advances in the area will be impossible, so instead we will go around the state and attack it from behind. At first our AFVs weren't so successful, but with the help from our infantry we broke through. We drove to the city of Tobolsk, but once we tried to cross the river to go south, we got stuck. But their slow reinforcements didn't manage to fill a gap in the front, and by pinning the Omsk defenders we could cross the river. Soon we had encircled Omsk. We can now begin to bomb their bunkers and slowly starve their army. After a long time of bombing we began our attack from the north. The battle was quick and decisive. Half of their soldiers surrendered after seeing our overwhelming numbers and soon we arrived to Omsk. With our success in the south we will continue here. We attacked from Tobolsk and Ishim towards Tuymen. On the way to the city we encircled a few of their divisions and could continue with our AFVs. We entered Tuymen but we won't stop here. Sverdlovsk is so close. We slipped past their defense in the south and captured Shelyabinsk without meeting any defenders. Then we turned north and after a short fight we entered Sverdlovsk. The most western front is completely opened, we have destroyed all defenders that were meant for it. It's time to exploit this before they have any time to stop us. Zlatut, Magnitogorsk, Ufa and Orsk all fell before the reinforcements arrived. But while they frenetically reinforced the southern front, they have left the northern one weakened. And since our front too is quite overstretched, we took the opportunity to shorten it and push towards the Ural Mountains. We tried to encircle their divisions, but we were way too fast on all fronts and could only encircle their divisions twice. Their army is twice as weak as ours and it's time to hurry up. We have received news that the Reich under Speer is collapsing. So we set our eyes on Samara and relaunched our offensive in the south. After a long drive we entered the city and the surrounding ones. They are now really close to surrendering. All we had to do was to drive up to Kazan and capture the city. 
We have unified the motherland. We will immediately start to integrate everything. While we had fought in western Russia, the Reich collapsed even more. A slave revolt from Estonia to Georgia has risen up. In Moscovian, Ferdinand Schörner has called Speer an illegitimate Führer and is seeking to destroy the slave revolt and become the new Führer. This means Speer won't be able to protect Moscow if we invade them. And we will. But Moscovian is strong, we will wait until we have integrated Western Russia so we can inscript their former army into ours. We also started training even more infantry and AFV divisions. Then the news arrived that Speer declared war on Moscovian. We aren't ready but we have to strike now. We will reach Moscow first. Moscow and Volgograd are liberated. St. Petersburg is occupied by the German and an offensive to the city would surely lead to a nuclear war. For the safety of the Russian people we will stop our liberation and solidify our control beginning with the de-Germanization of Moscow. The road of war is over. We are now on the highway of reconstruction. Thanks so much for watching and see you in the next video.